episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you a full list of um, reviews and stuff that I watched and played for this week. So to jump right into it, I'm going to start with Agatha all along the first three episodes, mostly because I wanted to see how good of a show it is, if it would be something I could get myself into. And the first two episodes really didn't do it for me. I did end up getting into the third episode to see if that would change anything, but for me it didn't doesn't or doesn't really pique my interest to keep watching it. But um, on the flip side for me it does work as a bit of background audio where just keep it going and listen to the conversation and all that. So I'm gonna probably just watch it that way and see how it goes, but for me it's not really up my alley to watch. Doesn't mean it's a bad show or anything, it just didn't hold my interest. So in case you are wondering um, about me reviewing it, that's kind of where I stand. So um, just a quick update there. Um, I did also have a chance to watch the latest episode of Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. So this is episode 7. And this was more of a stepping stone episode because we have some of the pieces of the puzzle coming together some more. We have Sauron ha trying to have Calabrimbor uh, finish the Rings of Men. Calabrimbor is kind of falling apart from the weight of the stress. We have Galadriel making it to uh, Numenor. So just all the pieces are slowly coming into place for the final showdown so continuing to be a good show worthy of watching um for season two most notably um on a related note though it, um season two of the rings of power has made me want to wa rewatch the lord of the rings trilogy so i have started watching the um extended editions of the film so i got through the fellowship of the ring and the two towers and in watching it i do see and i am able to appreciate um how much they are keeping the look and feel of Rings of Power in line with the films and even vice versa because I mean granted the films came out first but when you're watching um, Rings of Power you can see how much attention to detail they're placing on the show and you know you can see that similarity and differences and the passage of time and all of that stuff between the sh movies and the show so um, overall, definitely worth it. Um, certain things do stand out in the film due to age, because some of the CGI and perspective shots, like the depth shots, are kind of weird. Like, you can see the green screen. Every so often, the quality gets, like, changes between certain shots and stuff. But certain other areas stand out even more. So, like, the normalization of color and balancing when they have Gollum is really good, or when Gollum's on screen is really good. The set designs are really good and all of that, so... And it's the localized close-up shots that are fine, it's just the big panning shots where it's a little bit more noticeable to me at least, but do doesn't take away from any of that stuff. Overall, it is very, very well done. Um, with that being said though, um, and, or, I did make it to Fellowship of the Ring and Two Towers, so now I'm working on Return of the King, so I'll have the final review for that next week. Um, that's really all there is for there. Uh, that as, as of this recording, I haven't had a chance to watch um, the second episode of The Penguin, so I'll have that review on uh, next week's episode. Um, but I am planning on watching that. I did enjoy the first episode so much that I want to keep watching it, so there won't be an update on that. Or for, there's no update on that for this episode. Um, so with that being said, um, I think I mentioned it last week, but if I didn't, I found a good roller coaster theme park alternative to roller coaster tycoon it's an android game called real coaster idol game so essentially the the premise is the same um as roller coaster tycoon touch um where you're building a theme park you're building up stars or stalls and stands and rides and that sort of stuff 
Um, but the thing that Real Coaster has over Roller Coaster Tycoon Touch is that it is more level based, so it does bring in, you know, the Roller Coaster Tycoon idea of having different levels and goals and themes and looks and feel and all of that stuff. But it also brings a 3D perspective to it, so you're able to ride the rides, you're able to walk the park from the perspective of a customer. You can upgrade the stall, the entryway, and build more entry stalls. Uh, you can build more parking spaces, and then everything is upgradable. So. When you build your ride, you get the base model, but then as you earn money, you can upgrade them for longer queue lines, uh, longer cars on roller coaster rides, uh, more um, income. So, you know, the rides become more efficient and um, things like that. So you earn more money. And that's the same premise with the parking lot and entry gates that they, as you have more gates and upgrade them, then they become more efficient. So you can have more customers coming through and entering your park and all of that stuff and then you can upgrade your stalls you can evolve your rides for more stuff so all in all it's a better game to me than roller coaster tycoon touch so i definitely recommend playing it and checking it out um for reference it is also available on ios so it's not an android exclusive but i am playing it on android um but as of this recording i did finish the first level so um that got me hooked right off the bat to the point where i did buy the 999 it was 9.99 or 19.99 something like that um ad unlock so it removes a lot of the ads to um get some get additional money so there's a helicopter that flies in that will infuse you with money over time um certain other places like fireworks and i think it's a carnival tent or something like that that they make you watch an ad on the free version to get more cash the paid Non-ad versions removes a lot of that, so you get regular cash infusions, you can have fireworks and things like that to get a money boost. So that helps in upgrading the rides, um, stalls, and different progressions and things like that. And so far with the first two levels, there is also a separate goal that you can build a soup, like a giga, giga coaster around the park. So you have to have enough money and you have to upgrade your park uh, regularly in order to finish building it so that's kind of the highlight of each level so that's what I'm doing in the second le I did the first one already so in the second level I'm doing the same thing where you do have to you know expand your park upgrade your uh, rides and stalls and all of that so as you get money you can upgrade the or you can build out the giga coaster but you also have to expand your park in order to be able to handle it so you can't you know have the giga coaster on a level one of the park um but once your park is expanded enough and you make enough or you've made enough money then you can um eventually build out that coaster and i think in the first level is after that the coaster was built is when the second level was unlocked or once everything is up like everything is upgraded to the max is when the third next level gets unlocked so we'll see how it goes with this level so i can remember it but um with this review hopefully that um points out that it is definitely a um game to play i recommend it it's very fun um the graphics are similar enough to roller coaster tycoon touch maybe a little bit lower just because it does have that 3d um addition to it and you're more zoomed in than roller coaster tycoon touch where you're a little bit more zoomed out so you don't get the nitty gritty details so um that's the main thing to notice here is that um real coaster has those additional 3d options so the graphics are going to be a little bit the same or a little bit lower but it actually works out because you have these additional visual options to play with um so with that being said this week i also had a chance to finish playing pirate doom 2 and this is another game that i am going to recommend um because um if you like Pirate Doom 1 or you're a fan of good level design, then this game, this, the sequel to the game is definitely worth it. Um, the first half of the game is probably the, definitely the easier half. It goes by pretty quickly, but once you get into the second half of the game, you start getting more intricate level designs, more deeper and bigger looking levels. So when by the time you get to the last few levels, notably Hell and 
Lichuk's cabin. I think I forget what the other Lichuk level was, but by the time you get to those last couple of levels, you get some very impressive looking levels to play in. So that is why I'm recommending it. I mean, the demon thing does, doesn't really get tiresome at all because it's, it is very pirate themed, but it does stay fun. But I mean, some of the voicing gets kind of repetitive out after a while, you know, Ahoy mateys and the owl um, text is kind of funny still, but in general, it is it does it doesn't get old so much because you're spending a lot of time looking at the design of the levels, playing through everything, finding out where everything is, and all that stuff. So um, there's not much to say aside from it is a very good uh, Doom mod, definitely worth playing. Um, and if you've never played it before, I definitely recommend playing both of them. But um, both game videos or gameplay videos for me are now up on the YouTube channel so you can have the itemized gameplay and then the long plays for Pirate Doom 2 are also up so if you just want to watch through all four parts straight through don't worry about the level by level differentiation there's that as an option. So to round out this particular episode um, while I wait for the so I think last week I did briefly allude to it that there's a new Doom 2 mod coming out I think around October 10th called um, the real Doom 3 or Doom 3 as it should have been that's built on the Doom 2 engine um, so in the meantime while I wait for that mod to release um, I was poking around at mods to play and I found one called classic Doom 3 which brings the Doom 1, Episode 1, uh, Knee Deep in the Dead um, level to, or episode into Doom 3. So a bunch of developers many years ago recreated that first um, episode in the using the Doom 3 engine. So I thought that the first level looked pretty cool. So I thought, you know what, let me try it and see how it goes, play it and um, give it a shot. So um, the next game plan, because it's only like the usual 8 or 10 levels, it shouldn't take too long to get through so I thought you know what let me give it a shot and um, see how it goes play through it and just get a feel to see how Doom 1 would could have looked in Doom 3 so as of this recording the first level gameplay is out on the YouTube channel I'll have a link in the show notes to the playlist um, but you can definitely check it out and um, see how it looks and I'll preemptively say that um, with this, it does kind of look, or I do kind of wish that this is what I wish Doom 3 would have been, that they remade Doom 1 and 2 on the Doom 3 engine. Um, but I'll hold final review until the level is actually done. And so with that, that's all there is for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comment, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on this post on social media. All of it's linked on the website at headphonesneal.reviews, along with past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, if you want to get early access to the show with an ad-free version of the episodes, um, early access to the YouTube version if you prefer to listen there, and all that kind of good stuff, you can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash patel and zero one but that is all for this particular episode thanks for tuning in and until next time <laughs>